it's actually realistic or metric or post based simulator for transcranial electrical simulation or TES. So I hope this name will make you hungry. <laughs> so some for some uh, disclosure, I work for uh, academia and uh, industrial companies that is medical at the same time. So when people um, uh, are trying to build a model to simulate the, how the electrical current flows in the brain, um, it's really a very long way um, to go, uh, especially if you want to build a model for any individual uh, 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 subject. So first you have to get the MRI from that subject and then you have to run simulation on it to separate uh, out the different tissue types. And then you have to use a finite element model. Uh, finite element modeling software to uh, build a mesh and then solve the model to get the actual field distribution. So in this process, it's pretty um, um, complicated and uh, with a lot of different software and data formats involved. So it's uh, actually uh, pretty hard, even for engineers, it's tricky. So uh, they learn for those uh, clean people, it's even harder. So um, 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 that, that's why the, that's like, uh, in, uh, engineers have been working hard to uh, come up with uh, 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 modeling pipelines to uh, make it make this process easier. So we have uh, uh, some existing pipelines, like the first one. <laughs> this um, FTE is from actually from the, uh, the people working in EEG source localization. Um, so this software is actually not fully automated, and and this one is very popular. Same names. It's uh, under active active uh, development and uh, it's uh, already very easy to use. But the problem is uh, it's very hard to install. Uh, I remember I spent like an entire afternoon to try to figure out how to install this software. And also it's not supporting Windows. And this one, Ski Run, is uh, actually even harder to use. So um, all, all of these are not uh, perfect up to now. So we need uh, some modeling pipeline that's uh, fully automated and easy to use and install. And it runs on all the major operating systems. Um, so, is there any pipeline like this? Uh, at least, uh, as far as I know, there, there wasn't anyone uh, until uh, last summer when I came up with this uh, uh, pipeline called Ghost. So it's, it's very easy to use. Um, first, you go to the website, download it, and then you unzip it, and then you're done with the installation. And then you just enter one command in Meta, and then you wait 20 minutes to half an hour, and you're done with the simulation. The only thing you need is a uh, Meta and of course a computer. So, um, the, uh, the, uh, this pipeline, it, it, uh, it gets into the MRI in Nifty format and gives you the A2 field uh, in three different formats, like uh, Nifty format, and NF, and also the text files. And then, uh, in the next few slides, I'm gonna talk about why I choose, um, why I choose SPM and uh, Estimate and GDT, these three different softwares for this pipeline. So first, um, when it comes to the uh, MI hex implementation, it's kind of a, a mess because uh, there's a, there are a lot of different software in this community. So um, when you first get started, you actually don't know which one to use. And um, for our purpose, because we're building models for the transcranial electrical stimulation, most of them are not actually very related because um, the major part of this software are um, designed only for segmenting the brain. And um, this uh, FSL brain extraction tool called FSL BET, it can give you skull segmentation, but uh, the problem is that it, uh, it cuts off uh, around the nose. So that's not very useful because uh, for TS community, sometimes we want to stimulate the uh, lower uh, brain structure, so sometimes we put the electrodes even on the shoulder. So we need a model to cover the entire head. So that's going to be a problem to use a uh, uh, BET. And um, in SPM, we, have, we, we can easily solve this problem to give uh, the software a uh, prior map that covers the entire head, so we can get a segmentation of the entire head. And the other um, important issue is uh, the volumetric versus surface segmentation approach. Because in FSL bed, it's an uh, uh, entirely uh, surface approach to give you the skull segmentation. So the problem is that you can see from this uh, screenshot here, it, it only gives you like a um, very rough segmentation of the skull. You cannot capture all these realistic structures like what SPM gets you. So in terms of uh, realistic modeling, um, SQM is better for, uh, for our purpose than FSL. So that's why we choose SQM for uh, segmentation. And for the FDM modeling software, it's also kind of messy because we also have our choices. 
like all these open source um, mature and sober and also commercial software. Like commercial software it has a very fancy uh, user interface, but it's kind of hard to um, learn how to use it. It really takes a while to learn. Um, but uh, open source, uh, I choose S to match because it's a very uh, uh, simple meta toolbox and it, give, it has very uh, uh, easy uh, user interface. You just uh, read the documentation and you can know how to use that. Also, that's true for GDP. Uh, it's also open source, but it's very uh, easy uh, to, to use a uh, user interface. So I, I put these two together into the those pipeline. And then uh, I'm going to show you some initial results um, on the evaluation of this uh, those pipeline with some other uh, uh, modeling pipelines, including the my popular synonyms. So basically, I the first one is the roast, and then I replace the measure and solver with uh, different alternatives, including the commercial software simple scanning and commercial solver abacus, and also the other free uh, measure G mesh. And also, I replace SPM with uh, FSL and free surfer. So this actually is synonyms, and then. We're going to uh, see uh, how all, all these modern pipelines differ in terms of predicting the electro field distribution. And it turns out they are pretty much uh, similar. Like you see this uh, um, size view of the electro field distribution and their instruments. They're very similar. Um, like if you um, quantify the difference, say if you quantify the difference between the first two, there are actually the difference between the only difference is the, the measure, which is ISO to measure and SCIP. You can see the difference introduced by the measure is actually very low. If you only care about the brain, which is actually below 10%. And also, if you take a look between the second and third pipelines, you see the difference between the, the solver, which is get DP and abacus. And the, so the difference in the brain is still pretty low below 10%, but um, in the CSF, we get a pretty high difference. And one possible explanation for this is because uh, the solver always gives you the voltage uh, solution in, in the beginning and then do gradient on the voltage to give you the true field. And CSF is a very thin layer. So when, when the solver do the gradient, if there's any like small difference in the voltage, the gradient will introduce very higher difference in the H field. That's why we, we see this very high difference in CSF. And then if we compare the last two pipelines, which is between SPM and uh, SSO free server, which is actually the difference between segregation, we get a very high difference compared to the, the first two. Like in the brain, we get a difference of around 40%. So the lesson we learn from here is like um, uh, different segmentation indeed gives you very, very much different uh, um, electrical distribution prediction. And then up to this point, I know you guys uh, must uh, want to know uh, which one is more accurate. And up to, the, up to now, uh, the, the only answer I have is I don't know. Um, <laughs> unless we, we, we do uh, model validation, which is another big, to big topic, and possibly out of this uh, uh, scope of this talk. But I, I'm going to mention that later. Um, so before I go to that, I want to do some demo for you guys to, to show how to use this uh, pipeline, those. So first you go to this website, and then you download it and unzip it. And then you're done with the installation, and then you just start your manner. And then you, you go to the directory of Ghost. And then if you, if you just want to use uh, everything by default, you just tap Ghost and hit enter. And that will give you a default uh, simulation of um, the anode and FP1, and uh, cancel, I think it's around P4. Don't remember exactly. So um, that, that, that's going to be a simulation with everything by uh, uh, every, every option by default. And then you can also type the, the those with, with your, your own, um, the, the path to your own MRI file, and then some, some uh, configuration, uh, accordability in the, <laughs> in the uh, argument. And also here, all the, every uh, option is by default. And actually, um, if, you, uh, if you take a look at the readme file, you can see you can configure uh, uh, other options like uh, electro type. You can do disk electro, then uh, pad electro, and ring electro, and also um, um, the um, you can configure the size of electro and uh, a lot of different other options. So here's a video like uh, I want to show you how to use this. So uh, you enter the command and you give this uh, 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 size view of the. MI and also after electro placement you get this uh, rendering of the electro replace. And this is my hand that way. 
So you see a, a green electrode and head. And then after it's, it's done, uh, you get the size field of the segmentation. And uh, after solving, you get the AS field distribution, speed rendering of the brain. And also size field of the electrode field. And all these are saved into a, a, a file on the disk um, in native format and text file and also manual format. format. So this software has been there from um, the first of release is from last November, and then from this March I I start I started uh, to release version two, and right now the latest version is version two point six. So the new feature is like you can customize electrodes like I just mentioned this, and also customize the size and orientation. You can do all these uh, EEG standard systems. You can customize the, the mesh option in the FM model, and also you can just enter uh, whatever connectivity value you want. And also, if you don't have any individual MI, you can just use uh, the standard head, which is called the uh, UL head. It's a very high resolution, actually 0.5 millimeter resolution model, which covers the entire head. And um, it's included in this uh, source pipeline as a uh, example data set. You can just run this with have MI. So these are all the pros and cons. Because this is like a uh, very beginning, like uh, just the uh, initial uh, work of this pipeline. So up to now, it has many uh, good points. Like uh, it's free and fully automated, easy to use, and it's still, it supports all the major three operating systems. It's fast and really still automatic. It's good for batch processing if you have like uh, 100 different MRIs. But also, there's a lot of uh, um, disadvantage of this. You need a bad license. There's no, user, user, there's no graphic user interface. Um, visualization is very basic. It does not support abnormal anatomy like uh, stroke heads. So if you want to do stroke heads, maybe you need some manual correction of the segmentation. But we're working on that right now. And it's now quality insurance. And right now, these are some potential future work. So um, we're, trying to hire, uh, we're trying to hire some uh, software engineer to add a uh, graphic user interface. If you're interested, you can just uh, contact me. And uh, we're trying to add a uh, function also for the advanced 3D visualization, like uh, you do a cut view of the brain in the 3D rendering. And so we want uh, a lot of software to export the segmentation to third-party software for manual touch-up if you are doing a stroke head. Um, and also, um, we're also working on using deep learning to um, make a segmentation work for stroke heads. And also, the last topic is, I just mentioned that um, up to this point, we still don't know which volume pipeline is the most accurate uh, unless we do an accurate recording of the um, uh, electric field under transcranial electrical simulation and compare that with the model predictions. Up to now, we we know the third pipeline, which is based on commercial FEM software that's already validated by my previous paper, and it shows pretty good results. Like there's a, a high correlation of 0.8 between model prediction and the actual recording. So we we still don't know if ROS or SIMNIFS also give give us the similar results between the model prediction and actual recordings. So that's going to be the the next work. Um, so I want to uh, thank all the funding sources and city college and so it's medical. And also that's from the University of Minnesota.